Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This time it is Rittio, the story of Ricky. Which some places say this came out in 1991, and other places say this came out in 1993. So I'm not really sure what the actual correct date is. Because they had a limited theatrical release in the US around 93. But I don't know, maybe over sees it came out in 91 so I yeah, I'm not 100% sure on the date of this but this film is a lot of fun this is a great gift from Till from Germany he sent me it's a blu-ray from overseas film looks beautiful in HD the sound was great doesn't have much for features just a interview with the lead guy which was nice he would actually be in Ip Man 1 and 2 with Don Yen. Also, you have a commentary, which it was from scholars, and they seem like they're fans of the film, but it's a bit too dry. Uh, this, I think, would have been better with a commentary with people who love the film, but they're a bit like, energetic. Because, because the type of film it is, is based on a manga. So, I you say, it is a comic book movie through and through. It's 90 minutes of this guy, Ricky, whose girlfriend was fucked over because she, she saw a group of thugs, they were doing drugs, she got chased, this crime lord fucked around as well, and led her being chased off a building to her death. Which, granted, that scene it looked like a mannequin, so it has you know it's nitpicks I can give it, but this literally is one of those movies that it's kind of like if Peter Jackson did a martial arts film, because it has that gore and insanity that you would see in Dead Alive, aka Brain Dead, or Bad Taste, and I like the alternate cover of this too. Is it take on the, the manga which I know there's a few animes based on this too now this film when it came out overseas it didn't do well it got a bit a high certificate rating for mature audiences which usually was for films that had sex in it but this was apparently the first film in Hong Kong that got that rating strictly just because of gore and I know I've said in the past that a film can't survive just on gore, but if there's a special case, uh, this is definitely one to do it. Because the the, the way it's done, I have to think the people of Mortal Kombat, some of them must have seen this film and been inspired. Because there's a lot of scenes in this movie that actually just hear, FATALITY! And I know there there's... Was it... The Daily Show or Talk Soup. It was one of those. It was Craig Kilborn. And there's a, a shot where a guy like crushes another's head. That he would use. And it was from this movie. And it got a cult following because of the gore. And if you're going into it for character development. For drama. It's not that kind of thing. In, in a way it's, it's a little kid's wish fulfillment. Where you you have these people who are supermen, you know, who are so strong, and you just want to see them punch and punch the top of a guy's head off, and it falls, and there's a fucking brain lying there, or he punches up uppercut and takes the person's jaw off, or does this and chops the person's leg off. All that happens in this movie. Like this movie, the story is simple. This guy, Ricky, has been sent to prison. It takes place a little bit in the future where Well, it says here. He's locked up and systematically tortured by the sadistic warden and his cohorts. Through his radical actions and selfless attitude, Ricky quickly becomes a hero for the rest of the inmates and initiates a daring plan 
to break free from the brutal regime in which he is incarcerated. And man, like he is just insane, some of the stuff that happens in this film. Not just from the hero, but the bad guys. I mean, within 10 minutes of the film, you have these bad guys fucking with another guy in the bathroom, and the, the guy has like a toy, and they get bash it against the guy's face and a piece of his skin is off, and the uh, hero Ricky comes in, trips one of the bad guys who falls on some nails, and then gets stuck to his head. There's another point where Ricky's just trying to take a shower and this big fat guy comes in. He's like, I'm going to turn you to miss me and put you in a pod. And he just comes in, Ricky, and shoo, arm right into the stomach and pulls out and a gush of blood as if he was evil dead spews out. This is a bloody, bloody movie. And just fucks his day up. One guy tries to come in with a nail, he just takes it, and then does this, and bends the guy's fingers, and then he punches through the guy. That's what made a wish fulfillment, like, you would see, you would read comic books, and you just wish for one time to have these guys just go at it and just punch that fucker's head off. You know, you're super strong, let us see the damage, let us see the blood, let us see, you know, what would really happen, and it's, it's... Well, really, it's, it's not, this is not a realistic film in the slightest, quite the opposite, but it has really fun, fun, fun practical effects. It goes all out to 11 on the door meter. And it's just, whether it be the bad guys, who is this poor guy, they, they do this thing and they take off like this part of his face. And later on, you find out they left him in a yard, skinned. You have a fight scene where Ricky fights this tattoo guy, and the bad guy throws glass in Ricky's eyes, so his eyes are bleeding. But he punches someone on the ground with this water rises up and spews up and gets the glass out of his eyes. And... He, like, pops the guy's eyeball out. As the guy's like, oh, my eyeball. Ricky, his arm's been cut. He literally takes the veins and, like, puts them together as if he's hot wiring a car. And magically, his arm's better. And the bad guy's like, oh. He, he guts himself and then takes the intestines and wraps it around our hero, tries to strangle him with his intestines and Ricky's like fuck this throws him up and does a you know Sony Chiba and you see an x-ray of like a fist and like the, the x-ray face explodes so yeah he, he fucked that guy's day up and then some and Again, whether it be the bad guys, this poor some bitch, one of the big bad guys does this and smashes uh, an inmate's head to pieces, or when uh, Ricky's in the cell with the big guy, he punches and pops the guy's like bone out of his arm, and does this and takes the guy's fucking jaw out, and then when the guy's trying to punch him, Ricky. And obliterates the hand. Like, it just goes through it like snotty tissue paper. <laughs> just like, I love it. It's fucking insane. And it, it's, the movie knows what it is. I mean, it's based on a manga, but it knows what it is because it's not too long before another insane scene happens. And in between, it's either the, the hero having a couple flashbacks, like a flashback to how his girlfriend died. Which, granted, how would he know? He wasn't there. 
So how could he visualize how his girlfriend died? <laughs> Unless he's psychic. But, or, you know, his teacher and... You will practice demolishing these headstones. I think of Prey T. Nelson's. You smashed the headstones! Instead of move the headstones and pull the guys. But you didn't move the bodies! They say, say, you smashed the headstones! Why? Why? But he just smashed the headstones because his teacher told him to. It showed his strength. And you have the assistant warden, who I think the assistant warden here is the lead guy's father in real life. And like the first time we see the assistant warden, he has like all this food, he's overeating. I swear it looks like he's got beach ta tapes behind him, which are porn. I could be wrong, but that's what it looked like. And he's drinking a glass of water or something. And there's something in it, and it's his glass eye that he takes out, pops back in his in his head. That's what I mean. Like this lot of insanity in this film is just entertaining as fuck. And yeah, if you go into okay, he's so super strong. How come sometimes he's not getting out of the situation when it seems like he could? But like there's a point where he's chained up. And he's buried in the ground overnight. Of course, he survives. But we know you just break those chains. So, like, why doesn't he do it then? Like, why does he wait till later? And there's a lot of times where, wait a minute, it's like his, his strength fluctuates. Like, he should be able to do this sooner than he did. But they do a lot in comic books, too, if you think about it. There's a lot of comic books that are like, well, wait a minute, why isn't Spider-Man breaking out? Then, when he did it an issue, you know, 10 issues ago. So, I don't know, maybe because I was having so much fun, I could give it leeway with stuff like that. And yeah, yeah the dub's not the best, but you can also listen to it in, in its own language as well with subtitles. So, it gives you the, the choice. And then the actual warden comes in, and he has this obnoxious fucking son, who I was waiting for Ricky to, to kill him. But, and he's not like a little kid kid, he's like, he's a kid, but with like a 20 year old kid. Really fat, obnoxious, and yeah, I was still waiting for Ricky to like blow his head up or something, but that doesn't happen. Maybe that's like the one thing I'll say I didn't like was the warden's obnoxious fucking kid. But other than that, there's a lot of moments that make you, me think of like a Hercules or Superman. Like in the cell, which just what happens, they have one of those things where the ceiling is coming down to crush him and he's holding it there. That just reminds me of like a Superman or old Hercules movie. Like moments like that are fun. There's a point where this contraption here, there's like a bunch of pipes turned in to keep them trapped. And one of the bad guys force feed them razor blades. And I like the makeup effects. It looked like even some of the razor blades are like coming out of his cheek. He's been forced razor blades in his mouth. And when he, the tape's taken off, he just spits the razor blades right back into the warden's head. And I should explain people like, well, how the hell could you survive all this? Well, the teacher, they don't go in depth, but it's the best way to describe it is how I put it. Blessed with the inhuman strength, who after. They explain the, yeah, who has learned the art of Quidon. Which I can't pronounce that, but it's one of those things. You either go with it. That's the setup at the beginning, or not. Just one of the very first scenes. He goes in. They metal detector. It's set off. They put an X-ray, and he's got bullets in him. Like, how could he survive? And how do you have bullets in you? He must be a demon. This and that.
I didn't either go with. He's per. They do it on purpose. This not like. He's meant to be a superhero type of figure. And I don't know if it would have been better if they gave him like an origin story. Maybe because I'm so tired of origin stories nowadays, I'm fine that they kind of skip that and just go into the the gist of it. So maybe it bothers some people, but it didn't bother me. But I mean, when you get to the finale, like this one guy, Ricky punches the top of his head off, and his head and his brain fall to the ground. And then there's the warden, he like pops the warden's other eye out. And he's like going, uh, you know, falls down the stairs. There's a revolt and a riot that starts up in the prison. And Ricky gets into this room where there's like, it's just the kitchen. There's like a giant meat grinder. The warden has his gun that he shoots, and if the assistant warden, like the warden shoots the assistant warden, and he like, remember Big Trouble Little China when, oh, he's not going to stop. He balloons up too, but you do see like a big bloody explosion, and one person, they try to kick, Ricky dives out of the way, and they kick through this like cryo thing, and smashes the guy's leg. I call it cryo thing. I'm not sure that's the exact terminology for it. And then, I guess they kind of hinted where the warden said he has to take his pills. But because he doesn't take his pills, he literally turns to a monster. He turns into a fucking monster. Oh, there's a picture in here. Oh my holy shit. He's turned to a fucking monster. I think this is a picture of the lead star in the Ip Man films, but he did go on to be an Ip Man 2 and 3. That's the lead guy of the film. You kind of see the, the monster there. I'm like, wow, that's kind of the Super Shredder from Secret of the Ooze done right, because he actually does you know, get into a fight with our lead. and. Fucking... Punches holes in the guy, flings him into the meat grinder, and literally pushes him, the bad guy, down to the meat grinder. Blood everywhere. Blood like it was Evil Dead 2. Grind him in the meat grinder. I mean, that's that's hell of a death for a villain. If Super of the Ooze 2 went in that direction, where the turtles had Super Shredder in the meat grinder, it'd be a different movie and a different rating. I kind of wish I would see that. And Ricky has killed the, the warden. It's just the head left and throws it to the guards. There's like a, oh, you kidding? Punch. Blows up the wall and the inmates are that we're wall free. I like, I hope some of those inmates are not child molesters or rapists or murderers. Because if so, Ricky, you just let those free too. And you fucked up. But I, it's... I just see people tearing this movie down because of some logistics. But fuck it. This movie, it's fun. It's entertaining. I thought it was fast paced. I thought the lead guy did fine. In uh, insane practical effects, insane gore, many moments that make you scream fatality, Mortal Kombat style. It really does have a feel like a. P early Peter Jackson type of movie, like an R rate, it's like NC. Hell, this wouldn't even get an R rating with how much gore there is. So an unrated like comic book movie, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. If you've never seen Ricky L, the story of Ricky, and you like gore, you like blood, you like martial arts movies, you like B movies, you like. Peter Jackson's Bad Taste Dead Alive movies, any and all of the above, 
Do you like B-movie fil B films? You definitely need to see this. And while I wish there's a, a few more features, there is a nice little booklet. Not even little, it has quite a few pages that talks about the cast and the manga, and a little bit of the anime. Has some nice reverse. It's a Blu ray DVD combo pack. You're not going this for the features. It did look great on HD. I'll say that. The, the picture and audio quality were wonderful. Arguably the most violent Hong Kong movie ever made, now totally uncut. Yeah. Yeah, it probably is the most violent Hong Kong movie ever made. I tell one thing, I'd rather watch this than Ichi the Killer or Tatashi McKay's his violent films. This one I enjoyed much, much more. Fun and entertaining are the two words I repeat. As well as bloody as fuck. <laughs> so a lot of fun. Again, if you've never seen it, definitely, definitely, definitely check it out. But thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.